Hi everyone, it's Louise with Louise McCare, and welcome to our Thursday Night Rock and Pour collaboration. We're really glad that you're here, and we sure hope that you stay from now until the end of the train. So we have me kicking off here in a minute. We have Lori Houston at 645, Angela Bliss at 7, and we have a guest artist tonight, Taslima Maya Art, coming on at 715. So without any further ado, let's get this Rock and Pour train going, and let's get started. Hi everyone, it's Louise with Louise McKay Art. And I uh, hope everyone's doing good out there and welcome to my channel. And today I'm gonna to be working on a face of a clock. And this metal piece is about seven inches across. And I already have the place where I'm gonna place it once it's all complete. A little story about this guy, this little metal piece. It's a different metal than I had been using and so I didn't prime it. So the pour I did on it which came out great, <laughs> rusted. It started to rust. I actually poured two, and this is how they turned out with the rust developing on the edges in the middle. So I had to prime it, and I primed both sides. I'll show you in a second. Um, let it dry, and so I'm gonna do this again. So my colors are familiar, because I'm trying to burn up these colors because I've got really good color palette. This is a, com I'll have everything listed in the description. Here is the uh, pearl sky blue combination with what? So it's pearl sky blue with golden phthalo green and a little bit of oxide white. This is another combination. I need to thin this down a little bit. It started out with cerulean blue, some Arteza's bluish green, and also some treasure gold blue quartz. This is 24 karat gold iridescent gold combo. This is my little piggy sea glass. And this is, this is Payne's Gray with Liquitex and Golden. And let me show you. So I primed this side and I also, this is a side I painted on before. So there's a little bit of ridge here, but I'm not worried about that. It's gonna be just a clock face. And there's the back. So I primed both sides, hoping that I will not have a rust problem again. Okay, I'll be back in a second. I'm gonna thin down one of these colors and I'll get the pillow down and we'll be back. All right, everyone, I'm back, pillows down. I'm gonna lay the colors down in double speed because I need to cut time off of this video and you can see what I'm doing. All the colors will be listed in the description below. So if you have any questions about the combinations and recipes, it's all listed in the description. So click on the title a drop down will appear and you just show more and all of the information will be there. So just so you know, the only thing I talk about here is that gold. One of the reasons why I combine my 24 karat gold with the iridescent gold from Golden is because the 24 karat is so blingy and so bossy that I want to tone it down a little bit with the, the iridescent gold, which is just a very pretty calming gold. And then um, that there is the sea glass by TLP, which is just a phenomenal color and it goes with so much. And then, oh, another thing about this last color is this is the Payne's gray combination. And I love these two colors together. And the color that they bring in the Payne's gray is this rich grayish deep blue, really pretty. So I'm gonna go back to real time when I get ready to blow out the cell activator. But I'm gonna put down the cell activator next. And of course, beforehand, Stir it up really well, and I'll be back in a second. So I'm back to real time, just so I can talk through the blow and you can see it during real time. And this is really about a seven and a half inch piece. And I think the most my lungs can handle is about a four and a half inch radius or nine inch diameter blowout. So this is still within my wheelhouse. So once again, I blow straight down into the cell activator until I see a ridge form in a hopefully a perfect circle or as close to it as possible. Once I catch that ridge, I blow at that ridge to blow the cell activator over the paints and the paints out over the pillow. And I do that around the entire piece until I have it pretty spread, but not all the way to the edges because once you spin it, you'll be able to stretch it out that way. I cut about a minute here to let the cells form. Now with what I normally do with a 
coaster is I pull the pillow to the edge so that it has a nice path to travel on as it stretches. Otherwise, if you don't have it covered, what it does is the paint doesn't want to, it doesn't want to spread. It kind of almost acts like a break. And I'm going to cut out the rest of this stretching because you don't need to see that part. All right. The color combination is really, really nice. Cell activators come back nicely in the middle. Here we go. Nice and easy. I don't need to go crazy. I like to balance it up a little bit. See right here, I'm a little light paint. So look at that. Doesn't want to spread there. So let me take some of this and put it over here. For me, it's very important that I have that composition where I want it to be before I start to spin and stretch. Wait, shift it. Actually, I'm a little off center. Go slow. Get my scrap jar. This time I'm not looking for negative space. I want it to be fully covered. Let's go the other way. I love this color combination. It's amazing. So as we get farther into the video, I'm going to be skipping and going more quickly to skip out clean some of the mundane, between. like cleaning up. I always like to clean up in between. Oh my gosh, this is gorgeous. So for the rest of this portion, I'm going to be double timing and skipping a lot of mundane stuff. But one of the things I do talk about here is trying to make sure I get everything to stretch out. That's why I'm going to pull out the straw here in a second to help these two bluish blobs to spread out and kind of open up the colors that are underneath them. And I just talk about a little bit of philosophy where I discuss small tragedies that happened, at least with the painting, and then getting better results in the end. For example, in this one here where the rust occurred on the painting, it, this one ended up being much better anyway. And then also with the flag that I poured where the phone fell right into it. I mean, bad things happen, but it's how you deal with them that makes or breaks you. And um, yeah, I talk a little bit about philosophy and overcoming bad things and realizing that most of the time, if you take the right perspective, a bad thing happening ends up in a better result. So here is pretty much the finish of part one. All right, everybody. Hi, welcome to Louise VK Art and I am going small today. This is gonna be the smallest thing I've ever tried. So I have this project I'm working on. And it's a little project. It's a clock. And I'm going to make a moon for it. <laughs> so I'm just playing around here. So I've got certain colors. I've got uh, tiny, tiny smidge, smidge. Huh. This is my Naples yellow light. I have some TLP White Haven and a mixture of gray with a lot of white. I'm going to use this plus my black cell activator to make the moon. And I have no idea how this is going to go. 
So that's what we do, we try. So I'm gonna go into hyperspeed here. All I'm doing is laying down the gray, the Naples yellow light, and then the white haven on top of it, and then the cell activator. And the first one I don't like, so I'm gonna skip ahead pretty quickly, but I wanted to just show you what I did. So with the initial blowout, I realized I put way too much cell activator down and my moon was totally cratered. I even tried blowing the heck out of the cell activator to try to get most of it off, but it still was too much in the end. So I had to go back and redo it, but I'm gonna show you how it looked when I finally spun it out. Uh -huh. I think I need to put a lot less cell activator down. So let's try it again. So I'm going to go into fast speed again, basically following what I did the first time, only this time I add a little bit of white cell activator first, then I lay down the black. As I've mentioned multiple times in prior videos, is each pour is different. And you learn from each one what you need to do for the next one, especially if you're making sets of something. So every time is a learning experience. So in this case, I learned that the black is just too much by itself, but once you lay down the white with it, it kind of tones down the black, but you have to have the black so you have the definition of the cells. But the white helps make it less stark and less prominent. So here I'm blowing into that cell activator a lot to, just to get it to spread out and try to form some more misshapen cells because I don't want my craters to be totally perfect. How am I going to get this thing up? Oh, lordy lord. Here's my moon. <laughs> okay. So a couple months ago, my friend and neighbor up the street, Bruce Reeks, gave me this piece because he didn't know what he was going to do with it. He had it for years. He wanted to get rid of it. So I said, I'll take it. So I stared at it for about a month in my workshop, trying to figure out what to do with it. So ultimately I decided, you know what? That would actually make a really cool clock stand. Talk about one of a kind. So that's what I did. I ended up creating a couple pieces that you just saw me create and turned it into a clock stand. And here it is. This is my idea of how to best utilize this piece artistically, practically, and for fun. Hope you enjoyed the video, everybody. And remember to smash that thumbs up, leave your comments, and if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe, hit the bell, you'll get my latest tutorials. And next, we go to Lori Houston Art.